So this week was quite productive week for the project. Um, so we had uh, a short Skype meeting with Cliff Gilmore, where I explained to him a little bit about uh, main uh, obstacles in the project and um, what's the current uh, strategy that we have, like what's the feeling we have at the moment. And uh, it was quite productive. We still need to read through more about the paper of uh, Shimon and Etienne, but then uh, we'll probably try to go into this a bit more later. So, so then we went outside somewhere to sit with Etienne, just took the articles we had and just have a, had a chat about the problem. And I put this uh, at the end of the video, so you, you are able to see the kind of the discussion we had. So I wanted to ask him about whether what kind of things you need to assume from the dynamics and what does he think is the next direction yeah. to do. So after this discussion with Etienne, we actually traveled to the Snowdonia National Park um, just to have a like discussion about the uh, problem even further, but we didn't end up discussing too much about it. It was quite nice scenery over there. I just have a cu couple of questions about this paper that you you made with Shimon Brooks. Um, so in this paper you had uh, had this assumption uh, that it's a regular graph satisfying this uh, kind of like condition that it's um, when the graph size increases it gets closer and closer to a tree yeah. with this terms of injectivity radius. So that essentially means, in our case, when we do, if we would like to do the continuous version, we would need to use uh, the assumption it's a hyperbolic surface, essentially, or some kind of negative curvature assumption to replace yes. that condition, which means it's a kind of like a condition on the dynamics of the well, the geodesic flow, the manifold, and everything. So, but then if you look at this earlier paper by Sogge, he only assumes that it's a combat Riemannian manifold. So, um, so you think that? Yeah. So the kind of theorem we would prove would be more um, uh, would be would be more like this result of Hassel and AC mm -hmm. uh, for negatively curved manifolds. So where you have a logarithmic improvement. Oh, okay. So the logarithmic um, improvement comes out. Yeah. I don't know what you what you could do in the general. Uh, yeah, level aspect for general Riemannian manifold. I'm not, I'm not completely sure what this would mean. Also something that you uh, need to see is that uh, the, the condition that we're using is not the benjamin Schramm convergence here, but it's more a, con a condition on, the, um, on, on cycles. So here for us it would be the number of closed geodesics, mm. something like this, so some kind of counting condition like this. Uh, but it's, it's more or less the same idea. So, so when you have this... Uh so here, the assumption would give us, so if we would have an analog of the main result that you did with Shimon for the LQ norms, um, and you, we would replace this injectivity radius, uh, so the injectivity radius here as um, the injectivity radius of the surface, Yes. then, so then, so you think that we need to use some kind of a dynamical condition on the on the surface, so because we use the representation theory, which boiled down to this uh, decay of uh, uh, matrix coefficients in the representation, which is then connected to the fact that we are in a homogeneous uh, space uh, with a negative curvature. So, so in here, like we, wa I just wanted to find out that is there like a similar kind of. Uh, well, we would use uh, we would use some kind of. Uh of propagation, so some kind of wave propagation, mm -hmm. and um, so we need to we need to define an operator uh, as we used in our previous paper, a wave propagation operator, and um, and the, the the properties, the the way the way it propagates, and the, and the norm of this operator in particular will be related to the to the hyperbolicity to, to the fact that we're on mm. a hyperbolic space so this is where the dynamics would appear 
and um, so, but we don't need to see more kind of estimates as uh, Amos Nevo and Alex Korotnik and I don't think people. I don't yeah. think that's what we would need yeah um, no it's a bit simpler in a, in, in a way mm. uh, but yeah we need to build we need to build an operator uh, so using this wave propagation we need to build to build an operator that will localize spectrally mm -hmm. around the eigenvalue that we're interested in. And so, so this operator applied to our eigenfunction will just give back this eigenfunction and it will it will localize around the eigenvalue of this eigenfunction. So it will be zero for all the eigenfunctions that are not uh, so around this eigenvalue. Because in our case we had the propagator PT which was an averaging operator over the PT. So this was in the quantum mercuricity theorem, we had the PT yeah. appearing there. Uh, so we have a propagator here as well on the graphs, uh, but it's probably not the same similar kind of propagator. So, or maybe, maybe we can use the similar, the wave propagator directly. Or what do you think? Like, uh, uh, yeah, maybe the wave propagator would work directly. Yeah. But probably you can do with a lot of different ones. You know, it's a yeah, yeah. It's a tautology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, I think maybe the wave propagator would just be the easiest to use uh, the, the usual wave propagator because we won't... So, so in the paper with uh, you had with uh, Ella Linna Strauss and Simon Brooks when you did the graph version, did you have like... Um, was the propagator there that you used similar to the one that you're now using with Simon? Um, because there was the same kind of idea. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so on graphs, on graphs uh, we, we used the same kind of propagator, the, uh, this something that they defined before because there you don't have um, well you have well you have these Chebyshev polynomials and if you take if you take the Laplacian the discrete Laplacian and um, and you take the Chebyshev polynomial and you change you you, you put the Laplacian instead of the mm -hmm. of the variable then you get something that propagates, and and this is this is kind of a wave propagator, and mm -hmm. this is what we used in the, in both papers. But yeah, yeah. So so we understand how this works. We understand how it works spectrally on eigenfunctions, mm -hmm. and how it works geometrically that it, it spreads. It's it just yeah. The PT what we used in the reversing balls, we know how it acts spectrally already. We did yeah. that, but we can also use the wave propagator. So in the continuous setting, we have to see what. Do we need a spectral cutoff or? Yeah, or do we, just we, we don't necessarily need yeah. something that is regularized as as we yeah. as we used before. So we could just just use the wave propagator, and we need to combine to combine it in such a way that we will localize spectrally, and this mm. will tell us that it, the more we localize spectrally, the more we spread geometrically. And, uh, and that gives and you the con uh, rate with the LP norm. So this is the yeah, and this is where you this is where you use because you propagate. This is where you use something that could be yeah that okay. could be dynamics but mm -hmm. or or the hyperbolic structure yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to get some kind of expan exponential decay yeah, yeah okay i think what i'll do now is that i'll just have a i'll read through this paper of yours a bit more try to look at the main, main ideas and maybe i'll have a chat with cliff maybe on monday or something and we'll just try to work on this a bit more together and see where it goes yeah it looks looks good so <laughs> i don't know we'll see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for watching see you next week